So now the next style of problem is we're going to be looking at graphs versus tables. So graphs are another nice way to get a good sense of what is happening uh, with a graph towards a specific value of x. So let's start off with a simple one. So we got the limit as x approaches 2 uh, of 3 minus x. So if we just draw a quick sketch of 3 minus x, so... Okay, so 3 minus x is a line. It's got a negative slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So we should be able to sketch this pretty fast. So there's our graph. So now the question wants to know, what is y approaching as x approaches 2? And you have to look at it from both sides. So, you know, if you're going from both sides, you say, okay, I'm riding on the line, I'm riding on the line, I'm getting closer and closer to x equals 2. What is my y value approaching? It's getting closer and closer and closer to x equal, or excuse me, y equals 1. So, and in this case, it actually does reach it. But the limit is all we care about. We want to know what it looks like it's doing. We don't care what actually happens. What does it look like it's doing as x approaches 2 from both sides? It looks like the y value is approaching 1. So that is the limit. Done. Now, a more complicated one is, well, we still got this 3 minus x, but there's a, a problem it doesn't look like that at x equals 2. It looks like it actually goes to 0 at x equals 2. So if we drew this, it's going to be very, very similar. So we'll get our points here. And we're going to draw but when we get to 2, we're going to put a hole. And at 2, we're going to put a point at 0, because that's the y value now. The y value at x equals 2 is 0, no matter what. Everywhere else, it looks like 3 minus x. So this is the graph. So now what's the limit in this case? Is it the same? Is it different? What, what's going on? Well, again, you have to see what happens as you ride along the curve. You're riding along. You're getting closer and closer to x equals 2. You know, so you're getting closer to x equals 2. What does it look like it's doing? We don't care what happens at 2. We want to know what it looks like as it approaches 2. What does it look like as it gets closer and closer? We're going to get infinitesimally closer to 2. It looks like it's going to get to 1. doesn't get there, but it looks like it does. That's all we care about. So the limit is still 1 in this case. So you've got to be really careful. It's, it's deceiving. It, it wants you to think that there's something else going on, but there's not. It looks like it's going to approach 1, so that's the limit. Now, some special limits that fail to exist. So <clears throat> if we look at their graphs, we're going to see why they don't exist. So 1 over x. If we draw 1 over x, it's going to look something like this. So now try to approach 0 from both sides. Okay, well, I'm approaching zero. I'm riding on the curve, riding on the curve. I'm trying to get to zero. I'm trying to get to zero. Well, on the right side, I'm going up off the page. On the left side, I'm going down off the page. Now, there's no concrete number that I'm approaching as I approach x equals zero. So since I'm not approaching a single value like that, then it does not exist. So that's the problem with that one. It's got to approach a single value for the limit to exist. 
So now let's look at this one. Well, okay. So we have an absolute value in here. So that's going to do some funky stuff, maybe. Well, so let's try. Let's just try some numbers and see what happens. Let's plug in x equals one. We plug in x equals one. In the top, we're going to get a positive one. In the bottom, we get a positive one, so we're going to get one. So when x is one, y is one. What about two? If x is two, we get a positive two over a positive 2, which is still 1. Plug in 3. 3 over 3 is 1. So we can see at 0, though, there's a problem. If we plug in 0, well, you're going to get 0 over 0, which is undefined. So we're not going to have anything happening here, but we can kind of see that everything else is just going to contribute to this horizontal line at x equals, excuse me, at y equals 1. So we're just going to make that a big old solid line. <laughs> All right, and it goes that way forever. So that's what happens on the positive side. Let's see what happens on the negative. We plug in negative 1. Negative 1 in the top is going to become a positive 1, but we still have a negative in the bottom. So we had a positive 1 over a negative 1, which is negative 1. Negative 2 is going to become positive 2 in the top negative 2 in the bottom. So again, we're going to get a negative 1. So you can kind of see that we're going to have this similar occurrence happening here. It's going to be solid line, no matter what value of x we pick on the left side, it's going to end up giving a y value of 1. So now we, we can see the problem. As x is approaching 0, well, here I'm approaching 1. Here I'm approaching negative 1. They're not approaching the same number, so we're defunct. No limit exists. Now the last one is kind of a cool one. Now we know sine kind of oscillates and stuff, but what does this 1 over x do to it? Well, if you try to use a graphing calculator, it's not going to give you a really good picture. But we know that sine is bounded by 1 and minus 1. So the question is, is what happens as x gets closer to 0? Well, look at what the fraction is going to do. As x gets really, really small, it's going to make the overall fraction really, really large. So it's going to oscillate faster and faster. So it's kind of going to go something like this. So it's kind of going to do a, a jumbled mess in the middle. And you're not going to be able to, to really hone in on a specific value of y. Because it's going to jump so quickly between positive 1 and negative 1 and anywhere in between. So that's why the limit doesn't exist here. So again, just for your edification, let's just take a quick look at the graph. So we want the sine of 1 over x. And now if we do the graph of it, well, let's zoom in here a little bit. <laughs> it really doesn't do it justice. There you go. You kind of see it does a little bit of a squiggle. But again, it, it really just doesn't. Yeah, there is a little bit better. It, but it does it even more so in the middle and they don't even draw it. <laughs> so you can keep zooming in and zooming in. Yeah, and there's our lines. It just goes crazy. So... So that kind of shows you why the limit doesn't exist for that one. It just doesn't approach a concrete value of y. So, okay, so let's stop there and then we'll go into the conditions for y and we'll see, wrap up the rest of this section.